Hey everybody, welcome back to your audio recording class. My name is McKay Tabs, and today we're going to be talking about inserts and sends in Pro Tools. Uh, this comes from uh, the Pro Tools 110 book, Chapter 8. And um, we're going to talk about how to add effects to inserts and sends and how to make those effects apply to the music that you're recording. So the first thing we're going to talk about um, is each track has a different icon that represents that track. So here I have my mix window open and I have a bunch of different tracks here. And if you look down at the bottom of the tracks, you'll see these different icons, these different little pictures. And those are the icons we're talking about that represent that kind of track. Another thing that represents the, the specific track is um, the colors down below although you can change the colors if you want to. Uh, but notice that the audio tracks are blue. The MIDI track is purple. The aux input track is green. And the instrument track is brown. But um, also take a look at the icons there. Um, so here is an instrument track. It has a little keyboard, three white keys and two black keys on top. And so it's like a little icon of a keyboard. The audio tracks, they have what looks like transients, because when you record a, a clip on your stereo, um, you have these transients that spike up and down. So the audio clips look like, like those transients that you're recording on those kind of tracks. Um, an aux track has an arrow that's pointed down, and, uh, and that's pretty functional for aux tracks. What they're used for is routing signal through them. So that arrow means that something's going through that track. Um, so and we're going to be talking about that more today. And over here you have a MIDI track, which is a white circle with five gray dots in it. And just so you know, in the old days with MIDI, or maybe still today, but, but there's a MIDI cable cord. And it actually has um, those pins in the end of it that make that shape. So, so this MIDI icon, it looks like the plug when you... Um, you have the hardware and you plug in that MIDI plug into a controller or, or keyboard. Um, this is a VCA track, VCA master track, and it looks like sliders. You see how it's three sliders kind of sliding their way down. Um, so anyway, it's important to know the difference of those icons so that you can know which track is which when you're working in Pro Tools. So uh, anyway, right now I have a session open and uh, in that session, I have, uh, I have recorded some tracks and, um, and I'm working with some guitar tracks today. Now I'm gonna mute the first track and I want you to listen with it, or I'm gonna solo the first track and listen to that track and listen to how it sounds. I'm gonna turn the metronome off. So that's a nice, clean guitar sound, uh, but the word we use to describe that sound is dry. There are zero effects on that guitar track. Um, so it, it works, it's clean, it's clean, but uh, one thing you want to do after you record a track is you want to add some effects to it to polish it up and make it sound even better. So I have two guitar tracks here and they are both uh, dry tracks that need some processing done to them. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some reverb and delay to these tracks. Now let's go back to the mix window and we're working here on guitar one. Now look up at the top of this, uh, this mix slider here for guitar one and you have what are called the inserts and underneath that you have the sends. The fastest, easiest, quickest way to get some effects on your track is to just go to this insert, click on the gray box and then you get this list right here where you get to scroll down and see what kind of effect you want to add to the track. Uh, so I think I'll want to add some, uh, some, I'll add some delay. So here are my delay list, I have a bunch of different options. I'll just choose this one, mod delay three. So now it's there. So I have that track soloed, I'm gonna play it, and now we should hear that track with some delay on it. <laughs> I also need to come here to the factory default where I can choose 
uh, a type of delay that I think sounds fun. Let's try Chariots of Fire and see what that sounds like. I wasn't expecting that. Um, maybe that's not what I'm looking for for this, so I'm going to use this plus and minus button down here to um, audition through the different types of delay effects. So let's go plus and we'll go up one. It says chorus. Yeah, that does sound like a chorus effect. I'm not really hearing anything. That sounds like a filter, but it doesn't really sound like delay yet. So I need to find an effect that sounds like delay. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll put this on loop play while I'm trying to find the right sound. Let's try, let's try echo. Yeah, that's a nice slapback uh, delay sound. I like that. However, it's kind of too much. I need to tame it down a little bit. So I'm going to take this output here and bring it down. And now I see, now I have the same delay there and, and uh, it's, uh, well, it might be too loud still. So. Okay, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. I hear that delay afterwards, that echo. So anyway, that's how you use your inserts to add an effect on the track. That's a quick and easy way to get an effect there. But what happens is in a large session, sometimes you have, uh, you have lots of tracks that you're adding effects to. And so um, anyway, it could be kind of cumbersome to have to go on each track and add delay, reverb, delay, reverb, delay, reverb 20 times because there's 20 different tracks. Um, so there's another way to do that. But first of all, let's go back to the edit window. And here in the edit window, I just want to show you that these inserts are showing right here. So here's guitar one where we just added the delay. And if I hover over it, it tells me that that's the name of that effect right there. You can add effects through the inserts in this window as well as the mix window. So if I click on the gray box right here, I can once again scroll through and uh, I can add something new on that track. In this case, it's reverb. Now I just barely got some reverb on there. And yeah, so might be a little too much, but then you kind of use these parameters to find one that you like. So anyway, you can do it here in the mix edit window, or you can do it here in the mix window at the top of of the fader tracks. And, uh, and anyway, how many inserts do you have? 10 on each track. So I just barely used uh, two of them, so that means I have eight left. But right now, we can only see five insert boxes, right? Because these are sends. We're gonna talk about sends in just a second, but there's only five showing. If you want to see the other five inserts, you have to come down here to the bottom where that icon is where you get to customize what you see in your window. And right now it's showing inserts A through E, so let's also show in inserts F through J. And now it updates my window, and now I can see all 10 spaces for all 10 inserts. Um, and uh, you can do the same thing here in the edit window by clicking on that little menu there, and now we can see all 10 inserts. Now anyway, generally you probably don't want to see all 10. Most often you probably are not going to use 10 effects on a tr every track, maybe on some tracks. Um, so really they just kind of take up space if they're sitting there empty. That's why it's nice to be able to toggle them on and off so that you can not take up space when you don't need it in your window. But at times you want to add more effects uh, to more tracks and to do it one at a time like this is kind of time consuming. So that's when we start to use these sends here and we create aux tracks for return. We, we put, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an effect directly onto an aux track and then we're gonna route a different track into that aux track and then it goes back out with that effect. And then that way you only have to pick the effect one time but you can route all the tracks that, that you want to have that effect into that aux track and they will all have that same delay effect or reverb effect. Um, so anyway, I'm going to uh, undo these uh, inserts that I just put on at the top here. 
And so what we're gonna do to do this is we're gonna use the sends, and when you open up the sends windows, you have two options. You have an output option and a bus option. Bus is the option you're probably gonna use the most, so just know that when you're doing this kind of stuff, pick the bus. Bus works with plugins, and your Pro Tool system or your recording system has plugins, and that's what you're trying to access here. Um, so choose the bus. Output is for when you're trying to route a signal through external hardware. For example, let's say that you have uh, a piece of equipment in your office with you. You know, just like your audio interface, you have a mic preamp or you have a delay unit and you want to use the, the physical hard copy delay unit you have sitting on your desk. Well, then you could use this output here and you could select uh, A3 through 4 and that will route it to your external hardware and then back into Pro Tools for you. So anyway, but most often you're going to use a bus. So I'm going to do, use this bus and I'm just going to pick bus 7 and 8. Um, so that means that on this track, whatever is in bus 7, 8 will come into this track. Uh, so for right now, I'm going to leave that there. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to create an aux track that I can put the delay on. So I'm going to push Shift, Command, and N at the same time to bring up the new tracks menu. And then here, um, I have an option, right? So there's audio tracks, there's the master fader, there's instrument MIDI. But right now we're picking an aux track, aux input. And so I'm gonna pick that, I'm gonna push create. And, uh, and now I've got it. Oh, it's hard to see, it created it here right at the end of everything. So first of all, double click on, click on that track and name it the effect that it's gonna be. So I'm gonna call it, uh, I'm gonna call it delay. And so now it's delay and I'm also gonna uh, you can drag and reposition any track to change the order. I'm going to drag it clear over here on the other side of the master fader just to get it close to this guitar one that I'm working with on that track. But yeah, you can reorder the tracks just by clicking on the bottom of them and dragging them. You can also do that in the other window by clicking on the bar and dragging it and dropping it. Uh, and so you can al always reorder the tracks however you want to. All right, so. Here's my uh, my delay track. I'm gonna put the click track on the other side of the master right now. So here's delay. Uh, what you do is come up to the no input and put an input on, and you want this input number to match the same number that you put on the sends. So we put sends seven and eight here, or bus seven and eight. So for input over here on delay, we need to put bus seven and eight, or in this case, just bus seven, since it's mono track. So now I have the guitar one uh, routed into the delay track, but at the moment I don't have a delay effect on it because I have to add that. So I'm gonna come up to the top to the inserts here and I'm gonna pick a delay to add. Uh, so I'm adding it as an insert. I'm gonna pick the same delay I had a second ago, mod three. And so now I've got a delay on the delay track and now let's push play and let's see what happens. It's not there. So the delay is not coming into that track yet because this master fader right here, when you create a send, uh, it automatically opens up an extra fader for that send. Why does it do that? Because that allows you to control how much of the effect is in that track. Uh, the default is to put it in at negative infinity or zero um, so that when the effect is added, it won't like spike your sound system and, and cause a problem with your monitors or anything. So anyway, you need to take this master fader and scroll it up, scroll it up so that you're going to be able to hear the effect once it's there. So now I've got it up there. So now I need to come here to my factory menu and I need to pick a uh, a uh, delay sound that I want to add. Um, let's just try long echo and see what that sounds like. Are you hearing it? I'm not. And it's because of this little thing that, oh, I forgot to do that. And it's so frustrating. I spent 20 minutes trying to figure it out. And then it was just some little small thing. Right now, I have that guitar track soloed. Do you see the yellow solo button on it? 
Yeah, it's right there. That track is solo. That means that's the only track that's sounding. And so none of the other tracks are going to play right now, including this delay track that I just made. Oh man, that's frustrating. So if I want to hear that delay effect, I also have to solo that delay effect. Effect. So I'm going to solo it, and now I'm going to push play. Definitely got some delay going on there. Uh, let's see. Let's put this back on loop play while we play with this. Okay, so I have the delay effect on there. As it turns out, I kind of like that sound, but it's too much. It's way too much. So I need to pull that fader down and bring it back so that it won't be so much. Oh yeah. And now when I pull it down like that, I just hear this nice little slap back, which is what I want. I have a dry guitar sound and this little slap after uh, in the empty spots, uh, this uh, delay effect, anyway, it makes it sound wet, like a wet signal, um, but it makes it sound better, right? All right, great. So now I've got some delay effect added. Let's do the same thing now, but now let's do it for reverb, because most often you always have delay and reverb on every track. So I'm going to create a new aux track, and um, I'm going to name it Reverb. I'm going to come up here to the in and outs of it, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to select the same in and outs, which is uh, seven or seven and eight. So here's my in and out. Oh, I haven't named it yet. Okay, now it's named. And uh, go into the bus, and here's bus seven. So I've got bus seven there, and now I'm going to come up to the top here. I'm going to close the delay for a second. I'm going to insert a reverb. Uh, I'll try deverb mono. And um, all right, now I'm ready to see what it sounds like with some reverb on it. But once again, look at the soloing buttons. Is my reverb track soloed like the other ones? It's not. So I won't hear it unless I turn it on like that. And just to contrast these two effects, let's unsolo the delay track so that we won't hear delay while we're trying to set the levels for reverb. So here's my reverb sound. I'm going to turn it way up. So you can hear how it sounds like it's when it's way loud like that. But um, the reverb sound kind of sounds like you're in this big empty hall. So if you can imagine a performer on stage in this really big room and the sound bounces off the back of the room and it's just really huge. So it's something you could do that kind of beefs up the signal, beefs up the sound, uh, but you don't want too much usually unless you're going for a certain effect. So I have it on really high right now. So let's set the levels. Let's bring the fader back to a sweet spot where it's gonna sound really good. All right, so here's too much reverb. I'm going to pull the fader down. If I pull it all the way down, that's totally dry, no reverb, but I want to have some. There you go. Remember with reverb, it's better to be felt rather than heard. I mean, it's something you want to feel on the track, but you don't want to necessarily say, oh, I hear the reverb on there. It's, it's so prominent. You know, it's kind of an underlying effect. So you kind of find the right level for it using that, uh, that small fader. Uh, and then, and then you've got it. Now we have a track that has reverb and delay. So let's see what it sounds like together. Okay, so we set the le levels there. So just a couple other things. That's about it for how the sends and the inserts work. Uh, but let's talk about something called solo safe mode, because this is something you're probably going to want to use on your sessions so that you don't have uh, that scenario happen where you're adding effect, but you can't hear it because you have an instrument soloed and the effects not soloed. 
you can solo safe your effects. And if you do that, it means that when you solo a different instrument, that effect will not solo. It will be there every time. So you don't have to constantly think back to turning it on and off again. And it's a really easy way to do it. Um, so let me unsolo these two aux tracks, scroll in, and uh, all you've got to do is push the command button and click over the S. And when you do that, you see how it grayed out the S? Um, so now that S, it can't be soloed. So if we push play now, we will hear the, those effects on our guitar one track. So let's try and see. Let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. So the effects are still there. So I can unsolo the guitar track. The effects are still on that one track. I can solo that track and the effects are still there. So remember, when you're soloing tracks, everything gets muted except that one track, including the effects, unless you solo safe those effects modes. So solo safe those effects modes, and then they'll still be there as you're muting all those other tracks. Uh, okay, so anyway, we have two guitar tracks though, right? We just did it on the first guitar track, but that second guitar track is still dry. And here is why you want to use an aux input, because now all I have to do is route that second guitar track over and it will automatically tap into these effects. And the other reason why that's useful is because maybe sometimes you get the delay set just perfect and you don't you want to add that perfect delay to every track. You can do it on an aux track. Otherwise, you have to add a separate delay into every track and you have to reset the levels every time you add it in. So this way you can just set the levels once and just tap all the tracks in that you want to have that. Um, but anyway, so now I'm going to go to the guitar two track. I'm just going to add a, a send there. I'm going to send it to, uh, what is it send? Oh yeah, the bus uh, seven and eight. So now I've got it tapped into that delay and reverb stream. So let's solo the guitar two track and let's hear what it sounds like with delay and reverb. Do you hear it? Not yet, because even though um, even though I have it tapped in there, I still have the fader here, and I have to adjust the fader for the level of that effect. So let me pull it all the way up so we can hear it. All right. So here's the delay effect now. Way too much delay, so I'm going to pull that down and get it set just right. back to my other window and I can uh, start from the beginning and I can unsolo both tracks so we can hear them both together and instead of being dry guitar tracks they are processed guitar tracks with reverb and delay on both of them <laughs> So anyway, I kind of uh, worked through that in a hurry here. And, uh, but anyway, that wraps up our lesson for today. So thank you for tapping into this uh, video and I'll see you next time.